Government does those things for which if a private person did them, we would all condemn him as a common, ordinary thief. Now, let me give you an example of this. Now, I could see a homeless person uh, sleeping on a grate downtown in Seattle. Now, I could walk up to Bruce and say, Bruce, give me your $200. I can have a gun in my hand. And then having gotten the $200, I could then go down and buy the homeless person some food, some medical care, and some housing. Would you find me guilty of a crime? Of course you would find me guilty of a crime. You'd find me guilty of theft, wouldn't you? Regardless of what I did with the money, I obtained it immorally. I obtained it through theft. Now we might ask, is there a conceptual distinction between that act, where I walked up to Bruce, Bruce and took $200, and when the IRS comes up to me and says, Williams, you know that $200 you made last week, that you had planned to buy some uh, Chateau de Chem uh, with it, or put some money away for your daughter's education? You will not do that. You'll give it to us, and we will go downtown and help the homeless person. Now, I, can, I assert that there is no conceptual distinction between those two acts. Now, if you were to find any distinction whatsoever, it would have to be the first act where I walked up to Bruce, that would be called illegal theft. And the second act where the government walked up to me, that would be legalized theft. But however, we shouldn't pay attention to what's legal and what's illegal. That is, if we're going to be moral people. Uh, because many things in the world are legal, but they're clearly immoral. For example, slavery in America was legal, but surely it didn't make it moral. Or apartheid in South Africa is legal. That doesn't make it moral. Or the Nazi persecution of the Jews, or the Stalinist or Maoist purges, they were all legal, but clearly immoral. So morality has to be our talisman, not legality. Now it seems to me that immoral relationships among people have to be voluntary relationships. We can't have, we have to minimize coercion. Or maybe another way, you know, sometimes Voluntary is just too big a word or too broad a concept. I like to think of it as when I talk about voluntary or involuntary behavior, I like to think of it as su seduction versus rape. <laughs> now, seduction is the kind of exchange wherein we enter in, wh that we enter into with our fellow man where we say to him, if you make me feel good, I'll make you feel good. And for those of you who remember your statistics or game theory, we call that a positive sum game. That is, both parties benefit whenever there is seduction. And let me give you an example of seduction. That is, I walk into my grocer with $2 in my hand, and I tell him, and I offer him, I proposition him. I say, if you make me feel good, give me that gallon of milk. I'll make you feel good, give you the $2. And once we agree to that proposition, we're both seduced, we walk out of the store, I walk out of the store, I leave him there, we're both better off in our opinion. That is, I'm better off having the milk rather than the $2, and he's better off having the $2 rather than the milk. So we both gain. That's why we call it a positive sum game. Now, rape, on the other hand, is the kind of relationship that we have with our fellow man where we, where, where we proposition him the following way. We say to him, unless you make me feel good, I'm going to make you feel bad. Badly, those who want an adverb there. <laughs> now, <clears throat> that would be the case where I walked up to the grocer with a gun in my hand 
and I say to him, unless you make me feel good, give me that gallon of milk, I'm going to make you feel badly, blow your brains out. Now, whenever there's rape or involuntary exchange, we refer to that as a zero-sum game. That is, in order for one person to be better off, of necessity, somebody else has to be worse off. That's the characteristic of rape or involuntary exchange. Now, by the way, many people tell me when I talk about some of these issues, they say, Williams, we live in a democracy and it's majority rule. Well, actually, it's not supposed to be a democracy. It's supposed to be a republic. Let's just forget that for a moment. But I tell the people that I don't find gang rape any better than individual rape. <laughs> that, is, that is, just because a person, a group of people vote to rape somebody, that doesn't make it moral. Now, now widespread private control and ownership of property is consistent with seduction and the minimization of rape. <clears throat> Widespread government ownership and or control over property is consistent with rape maximization. In fact, government is the major source of organized rape all over the world, including the United States. <clears throat>